Hi, I'm Rick Kaufman, Technical Marketing Engineer for the Technical Enablement Team here at Aruba Networks, Episode 11 of the Aruba RESTful Automation Series. Now, we're going to talk about something near and dear to my heart, is Stackstorm. And Stackstorm is an automation platform that simply lets you say, if this happens, then go do that. So it's event-based, and we can watch other systems with sensors and kick off triggers that kick off rules that launch an action or a whole series of actions called a workflow. Anything you can document, any process you can document, you can automate with Stackstorm. And Stackstorm has these things called Stackstorm integration packs where they're out on Stackstorm Exchange. And there's over 200 other vendors automation packs already written waiting for you to take advantage of them. So Stackstorm is just like a server and you can think of it like your iPhone and we can get Stackstorm integration packs and take them from the exchange and plug them into our Stackstorm server and then we have that functionality. So if I wanted to do some Twitter automation, I can get the Twitter integration pack, put it in my Stackstorm server and if I wanted to talk to AFC, I could get the, the Aruba Fabric Composer pack that I wrote and we can put that in Stackstorm as well and now we can tweet VLANs into our Aruba fabric. Don't know why you'd ever want to do that. It's one of those crazy things I do just to say I did it. But you can do all sorts of stuff. It's any of the action packs, the integration packs to any integration pack. So as long as there's a Stackstorm integration pack for the API that you're working with, we can just use Stackstorm and take advantage of its event-based architecture to where we can say, Oh, something happened over there. If that happened, then this, go do this, take care of it, right? So let's dive into this and jump into the lecture. Thank you for joining me. And we're almost there. We have one more episode left and then we're going to start a whole bunch of other stuff. So thank you for joining and let's get started. Episode 11 of the Aruba RESTful Automation Series. We're going to talk about Stackstorm. I'm going to introduce you to Stackstorm, the if this, then that automation platform. So Stackstorm, what does it do? Well, we use sensors to listen for events in all these other applications. And when we hear something, we load a trigger which kicks off a rule. And that rule says, if this trigger happened, go do these things or thing to the things down below, right? So vSphere could kick up a port group. I could hear about it, kick off a trigger to a rule that says new port group, and the new port group kicks off an action that is a Python script that configures a new VLAN on the network. So it's a cycle of automation here by listening and reacting to the world around this. All right, if I'm a developer and I'm developing software for VMware, then I'm going to have to write my own little functions to get all the stuff I want. And then if I go to Ansible, I have to write a bunch of that as well. But what if I just used Stackstorm and then I took modules for each of these other things that had all the code already written for me and plugged them in? That way, I only have to write the integration pack for my thing. That's the Stackstorm framework. It's if this, then that. So any workflow you can document, you should automate because I can load in all these action packs or integration packs and I can call actions out of any one of them in any order. And I don't have to write all the other action integration packs. So here, I can deploy Stackstorm at a very big scale. We can scale out Stackstorm deployment. It's super available, highly available for enterprise customers. When we get Stackstorm running, we're gonna find out that we can access it through our web browser or through the command line. You'll probably wind up using both because developing packs is better on the command line. Figuring out what's going on is way better in the web browser. So to get it going, you just get yourself a fresh copy of Ubuntu 18.4, get curl installed, app get install curl, then there's this big curl command in the middle of your screen. Now you can just run that and it will give you an all-in-one development only installation of Stackstorm and lets you log into it with the ST2 login, ST2 admin. 
lets you log right in. You can also use Docker Desktop like I do. And so you wind up getting Stackstorm running on your desktop in Docker containers, like 18 Docker containers. Just go out and clone this repo, follow the instructions. It'll all come up for you. And that ST2 client is where you'll open that container to get to the Stackstorm command line interface. Actions, you can see here, I have um, some core actions at the bottom. Those are built in. So there's actions already inside Stackstorm. But in this example, I imported or installed the Cisco ACI integration pack that lets me take advantage of the automation, like create a new endpoint group, or I can get a list of the endpoint groups. All that is built into these actions, and they are now available to me and my workflows using Stackstorm. I also have runner types for actions, so I can have local and remote shell commands and shell scripts. I can have Python scripts, and I can kick up other workflows. I can take some existing Python automation and I can refactor it into Stackstorm actions. With sensors, like I said, we run a callback function on all these other APIs and we listen for things that we can trigger rules. We can also do webhooks. And there's a slight difference between the two, but mainly I just use the interval timer. So more on triggers and sensors later. Rules, this is how a rule looks. A rule has a name and it's either turned on or it's not. It's enabled or it's not. And you can turn that on and off in the GUI interface with a switch. When this rule is turned on or enabled, the trigger comes into play. And right now I'm using an interval timer every 60 seconds to kick off the trigger, which the rule says the trigger has been seen. Let's go do our action at the bottom and whatever is in the action will get done. So that could be a Python script or whatever any of those other runner types are. Workflows, on the other hand, we are stitching together actions from all our installed integration packs. So any action in any pack in any order in any workflow, all available to you just by putting workflows together inside Stackstorm. So on the Stackstorm Exchange is where you're going to find all this other automation. I'm going to say SD2 pack install Active Directory. And now I have access to all the actions in that integration pack. It's like Stackstorm server is a cell phone and I want to talk to or I want to interact with Twitter. I go to the App Store and download Twitter. Same thing. I'm just going out to the app repository and saying SD2 pack install Twitter. Now Stackstorm has access to Twitter sensors and other Twitter actions. Once I get it all put together, I can start building workflows across all of these things because they're all in Stackstorm Exchange. In the bottom, I have actually have some open source uh, integration packs I have been working on personally that lets you have communication to these other HPE and Aruba products. When we set up the demo, I have it running in Docker Desktop. I have all 18 containers. You can simply go to localhost, port 80, and the web browser will get you access to the ST2 client, and you can follow along there. So let's see what we have in store for the demo. Let's have a look. Okay, I am opted to load Docker Desktop on my MacBook, and you can see I'm running the dashboard right here, and I have ST2 Docker is running here, but it's orange. Don't worry about the orange. Um, that's just normal. But if you open it up, you'll see that all the containers we want are green, and there's a few of them that are not, and that's perfectly fine. But if you want to get to Stackstorm from the command line, you would come here to the client and go down here and click on this little arrow. That opens up the terminal for the ST2 client. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see this. I want you to bash. So here we're going to say ST2 login, ST2 admin, and then when it asks for the password, we'll give it the password. And then it will look like it didn't work. It like, you didn't use the right password. But yeah, big deal. 
So it will age out. You just log in again, not a problem. So here we're in the stack storm itself and we can now preface our SD2 command and then say um, action list. And then it will go out, it will list all of our actions. So we wanna see just one action, we can say list dash P, and then we can say um, T W I T T E R. Boom. Okay, we got Twitter. What else do we have in there? Ruba Central, all one word. Right, so we're gonna see that. Look at that. We've got an action pack for Aruba Central installed, and we can get the groups. We have some uh, identity information written into the Stackstorm pack that we can edit and change our username and password so we can get tokens from, from Aruba Central. We're going to say st2 run Aruba Central dot action get not capital get underscore groups like that. And then it'll go out and get our identification information that we put in, get a token generated, and it will go out and just get the groups from Aruba Central. And you can see here in my result, I got the names of all the groups out of Aruba Central with an action pack inside StackStorm. Now, I, doing this in the Docker desktop, I should have access to this with the web browser. So if we call up a web browser and we go localhost port 80, we'll be able to log in with st2 admin and our password, which is, and then we're in. So once we get in, we can see the history here of things that run. These are things that happened in Stackstorm. Now I got a green check mark here that it went and got the groups. And then I can come down here and I can actually see the information it got. It got a list of list of groups, right? So now I get to see what it's actually doing. Now I can come in here with the web browser and I can look at rules. And remember I said a rule could be enabled or not. So we can turn it on there or turn it off. So whenever we have a rule ready to run, we can enable it here. Here we can see a list of packs, but the best use I get out of this is being able to have visualization into like, oh, say workflows that ran. And I can drill into these workflows and see all the different actions that ran. And I can see which one has failed as well. Okay, that's so, a super fast overview of Stackstorm. And we're going to do more on Stackstorm later. So stay tuned for that. But I just wanted to let you know Stackstorm's out there and it's available. And we can use Stackstorm to take advantage of a lot of other automation that is already pre-written that we don't have to write ourselves. I want you to join me in the next episode, the final episode of the Aruba RESTful Automation Series, where we're going to see Stackstorm working with Aruba Central. So join in for that. And um, thank you for hanging in there with us all the way. We hope a lot of this pays off and we hope to have everybody that's watched this out developing their own applications. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next and final episode of the Aruba RESTful Automation Series.